morning. I'm Gerald Boyer. I'm a minimally invasive spine neurosurgeon currently practicing at Advocate Illinois Masonic Medical Center in Chicago, Illinois. I want to talk to you today a little bit about uh, VTI Interfuse uh, products and why I like them for lumbar fusion, particularly for min minimally invasive uh, inner body fusions. I really believe the infusions, particularly if we're doing any kind of deformity work, the bigger implant that we can put in, the better. We do know that implant size is uh, inversely proportional to the amount of subsidence, so the larger implant that we can get in, the better. And one of the limitations that a lot of surgeons face is if you're doing a minimally invasive surgery, for instance, through a tubular retractor, uh, it tends to limit uh, the implant size with most devices. Uh, so what a lot of guys will do is just pound in a single um, T-lift cage or banana cage uh, with a limited footprint and ultimately that can lead to subsidence, uh, pseudoarthrosis and so on. So the other option you have is to do a completely separate exposure, do an A-lift and then flip them over to do your decompression. I think the best solution we have, what I've found, is to use uh, VTI Interfuse which really allows me to assemble an implant basically the size of an A-lift cage and still deliver it to an 18 millimeter tubular retractor. So a little bit about the technique I'll have uh, if we're doing one level, four pedicle screws in. And at this point, I'll at least start out uh, and do a minim minimal discectomy enough to uh, get a distractor in. I'll start with the largest distractor. I typically will use a paddle distractor. I will uh, place the paddle distractor in, distract the disc space, and then lock down my pedicle screws bilaterally. And then if I haven't achieved enough distraction, I'll take the distractor out, grab the next size uh, distracting instrument, and continue to progressively distract. So once that uh, is achieved, uh, then I'll move to my shavers and again doing this all through an 18 millimeter tube uh, go in with a, a paddle style shaver and again it's fairly easy to clean out the side that the tube is on and again we're planning for just a unilateral approach through the tube so we also need to get the contralateral side. So here I've angled, angled the tube to the contralateral side, which allows me to reach my shaver. So we're going to fill this entire disc space uh, with an implant. So again, reaching this contralateral side with your discectomy is very important. So at this point, I'm usually going to reach down with um, really the largest down pushing curette that I can fit through the tube. Okay, that's going to allow me to uh, displace disc material on that contralateral side. Uh, you can even get a longer one to reach the far corners of the disc space here. And again, simply by angling my tube, I can usually reach this far contralateral side of the disc space. At this point, once the disc prep is complete, I'll usually angle my tube once again. We've done our distraction, we've done our uh, disc prep. So at this point we're ready for implantation. So we'll take the first module. This can easily be delivered uh, down the tube. There's usually just a little bit of resistance there that will hold the implant in place, but still allow you to translate it over. Most of the time when you place this in, I try to go as medial as possible with this first implant. It just allows you to do less work in translating it. And then the second module simply slides down the tail of the first module. You'll hear an audible click as it snaps in place. Uh, sometimes you need a little bit of counter traction. You can hold this with a hemostat if you want. At this point, you'll need to cut the tail off the first module. There's a rotation style cutter that will slide down the tail of the first module. And 
simply by rotating this. There's a positioning device that you can simply slip down beside the implants. It's curved at the end. Uh, generally, I've got to use it both directions, so you can slip it down. Use that to slide the device immediately. Sometimes I'll flip it around, just get a little bit more of a mechanical advantage. The instrument is removed leaving the tail of the second implant. We'll then take a third implant. Again, we'll cut the tail off the second module, simply by rotating the cutter. Again, we'll take the positioning guide down through the tube. You can translate the modules. Simply repeat these steps with the fourth modules. Go on to the last module. Again, sliding down the tail. And again, audible quick. Uh, generally at this point, I'll leave this inserter attached. And we'll cut the tail. Um, generally we'll be doing x-rays throughout this procedure just to make sure we've got the correct orientation within the disc space. Uh, but at this point, I'll usually do a lateral shot just to make sure that the position of the implant is, is fairly horizontal and symmetrical. Uh, typically, I'll leave this device on, but very often this side of anything needs to be tapped down a little bit, so I just use that as an impactor. Once you're satisfied with the position, this remaining guide is removed, and placement of the inner body cage is complete. At this point, then, I'll generally re uh, loosen the set screws on the pedicle screws, release my distraction, apply compression uh, across the interspace like you would with any other implant. At this point, uh, you've completed your inner body procedure, closed in the standard fashion like any other uh, lumbar fusion.